Hey friends, today I'm going to read you a story called It Just Happened When Bill Trailer Started to Draw. Now Bill Trailer turns out to be one of the most important um, American artists from the 20th century. He's a folk artist and if you're a folk artist it means that you're drawing art or making art that represents your culture and that you're not um, an educated artist. You didn't go to art school but you're self-taught. And you probably never heard of him before. I had not either. So Bill Trailer was born into slavery, and that's another thing that makes his story so interesting. And so this is a book about his life. I hope you like it. I think it's great. It just happened. It was early summer in Montgomery, Alabama, 1939. On downtown Monroe Avenue, an elderly man sat on a wooden crate. With a board laid across his lap and the stub of a pencil grasped in his hand, he began to draw a picture on the back of a discarded laundry soap box. Often folk artists will use just materials they find around also. They don't go buy big fancy um, palettes and big fancy paints and that stuff. They just use whatever they have. Who was this man and what caused him to start drawing at the age of 85? His name was Bill Trailer, and if people had asked him, he might have said, It just came to me. So 85, he became an artist. Up to that point, he'd never drawn before. Back in the 1850s, George Hartwell Trailer and his wife owned a cotton farm near Benton, Alabama. The trailers also owned more than 20 slaves. Sometime during 1854, one of the enslaved families had a baby boy. He was given the name Bill, and his last name became Trailer, the same as his master's. From the minute the sun lit the sky until it disappeared into the night, the slaves picked cotton in the hot, dusty fields. When Bill was old enough, he was put to work, too, pulling weeds, fetching water, and gathering wood. After he finished his chores, Bill sometimes met his friends at the bank of the Alabama River. They jumped into the cool water and waved at the steamboats passing by. Without realizing it, Bill saved up memories of these times deep inside himself. When the Civil War ended in 1865, the slaves were freed. Many people left their former masters, but Bill's family chose to stay on the trailer's land. They worked as sharecroppers, farming and sharing their crops and profits with the people who'd once enslaved them. So if you're a sharecropper, you basically are renting the land from the people who own it, and then you have to pay them for the seeds and pay them for part of the, for the work and the land, and so really, it's really, really hard to make money. Even though the war was over, northern soldiers continued to burn many southern farms, villages, and towns. Young Bill and his family watched in horror as the trailer's farm, equipment, and animals were destroyed. Bill's family managed to survive unhurt. They rebuilt their home and continued to work the land for many years. Bill saved up memories of these times deep inside himself. By 1881, Bill was a grown man, a hard-working farmer. He married a young woman named Larissa, and they lived in a small cabin by a creek. Soon their home was filled with a brood of hungry children. Money was scarce. You could have that building over there full of money, Bill once said, but you couldn't eat it. So everyone, even the littlest child, worked on the farm to grow the food they needed to fill their empty bellies. Bill saved up memories from these times deep inside himself, too. Bill had many animals, including a mule, that helped him complete his chores. But sometimes that mule turns stubborn when Bill approached him with his plow. The minute he sees a plow, he starts swinging back. Gets that pride from his mama, Bill said, annoyed at the mule when the mule refused to work. The animals on the farm also amused Bill. He chuckled as he watched them go about their business. Chickens strutted in the yard with confidence. Cats tiptoed across rooftops with grace. Snakes slithered through the brush, always up to no good. Some animals even have personalities that remind a bill of people he knew. He saved up these memories deep inside himself. So why do you think he's saving up all these memories? You'll have to see, I guess, at the end. Come Saturday night, the men danced to the tune of a fiddle while the women sang up a storm. Children ran back and forth, snapping their fingers to the beat of the music. Even owls in the trees bobbed their heads to the music. After the festivities, the men took their dogs and went hunting and fishing until late into the night. 
The next day, Bill roasted sweet potatoes and whatever, whatever he'd caught and served them up for dinner. Sunday morning, folks gathered alongside the river bank. Under the shade of tall trees, they, tor they formed a circle around the preacher and listened to his message in song. With praises of joy, they clapped and raised their hands to the sky. Bill saved up these memories deep inside. Sorry, I know there's a bit of a glare. Bill spent a lifetime on the trailer's land. By 1935, he was 81 years old, way up in age and all by himself. So he lived on the land of his original masters until he was 81 years old. He stayed on their property. My white folks had died and my children scattered, Bill said. His wife had died too. With the people he was close to gone, Bill had no reason to stay on the farm. He packed his bag and headed to the nearby city of Montgomery, Alabama. So I think this is a little hard to see this time. Sorry. Finding a job in the city wasn't easy. Bill had never learned to read or write, and his, far and his work on the farm hadn't prepared him for city life. Eventually, he found employment at a shoe factory, but Bill developed painful rheumatism in his joints. Before long, he was forced to quit his job. Remember, he's 81. For a long while, Bill sold pencils provided to him by the U.S. government. He didn't make much money, and he soon became homeless. During the day, he wandered through downtown Montgomery. It was an exciting place to be. People bustled along, going in and out of markets, shops, and restaurants. Automobiles and horse-drawn buggies rambled through the streets. At night, Bill slept on sidewalks, in doorways, or in alleyways until the owners of the Ross Clayton Funeral Home befriended him. They offered Bill a place to sleep in the storage room of their business. He piled a bundle of rags on top of a wooden pallet, and there among the caskets, Bill rested his tired body. As he lay in the storage room at night, Bill was overcome with loneliness. He missed his family, his farm, his animals. Deep inside, he found all those saved-up memories of earlier times. Sorry, I feel like this is really hard to see tonight. Bill could not contain his memories. One day in early 1939, he picked up the stub of a pencil and a piece of discarded paper and began to pour out his memories in pictures. Bill's first drawings were simple items, cats, cups, shoes, baskets. Then he began to draw human and animal forms too. He used the side of a stick to, to rule straight lines and shapes. Rectangles became bodies, circles became heads and, and eyes. Lines became outstretched arms, hands, and legs. He filled in shapes with sketchy lines and smoothed out edges. The sidewalk of Monroe Avenue became Bill's art studio. A wooden crate was his artist's bench. Scrap cardboard and old paper cartons were the canvases on which he drew his pictures. And the clang, clang, clang from the nearby blacksmith shop provided background music for, Bill's, for Bill while he worked. So the pictures that you see along the top, those are his real drawings. Like the snake and the birds and the dog or the goat, whatever that is. Folks of all ages came to watch Bill work. One of his admirers taught Bill to write his name. Soon he was proudly signing his drawings. Bill often hung his pictures on a nearby fence. When passers-by asked questions about his drawings, Bill didn't mind. He could be quite talkative. But if Bill was focused on his work, he offered no conversation at all. On a summer morning in 1939, the young artist named Charles Shannon caught sight of Bill sitting on his crate drawing. Charles was intrigued as he watched Bill's hand make its marks and fill them in. Bill's pictures danced with rhythm unlike any drawings Charles had ever seen. Remember, he didn't start becoming an artist till he was 85 years old. That's pretty amazing. Charles began visiting Bill regularly and wanted to support his work. He brought Bill art supplies, colored pencils and paintbrushes, poster paints, and high-quality paper. But Bill liked to do things his own way. He used the colored pencils and some of the paints, but he continued to work on the backs of discarded bags, signs, and cardboard boxes. Bill's hands were steady and confident. He was not concerned about messing up, and he almost never erased. When painting, he favored a rich, spare palette of colors, deep blues, bright reds, sunny yellows, and earth browns. 
He used paint straight from the jar and, nearly, and rarely mixed colors together. Soon Bill moved to a shady spot on North Lawrence Street. There he continued to pour out his memories, often drawing until late in the day. He drew wide-eyed owls, big red frogs, and fighting cats. He sketched spotted snakes and hunters on horseback. Sometimes Bill talked about his pictures. I wanted to be plowing so bad today I drawed me up a man plowing, he said. Bird on top of the basket and he don't know it, Bill joked about one of his humorous pictures. Bill also drew the people he saw in the streets of Montgomery, a man, men in tall hats and women in patterned dresses, folks walking dogs and a man with a crutch. He drew the blacksmith's shop and the blacksmithing tools arranged in rows. When people paid for a few cents for one of his pictures, Bill was amused. Sometimes they buy them and they don't even need them, he remarked. So all these drawings that you see around the sides are really our drawings that he had done and the artist in this book has copied them so you could see them. Charles Shannon so admires Bill's work that he arranged for a show of Bill's drawings and paintings. The exhibit called Bill Trailer, People's Artist, was held at the New South Art Gallery on February 12, 1940. About 100 of Bill's works hung on the walls of the gallery. Bill moved slowly from picture to picture without saying much. Finally, he pointed his cane at one of the drawings and said, This old horse, he fat, but this poor old skinny mare here, he doesn't work all his life. None of Bill's art sold that day, but he, that didn't bother Bill. Money was not the motivation behind his drawings. Bill drew pictures for himself to enjoy the saved-up memories of his life. He didn't know his pictures would also bring en enjoyment to others, but without realizing it, Bill Trailer shared his memories with the world. So one reason he's become so well-known as an artist is his work is very interesting, but also he is the only artist who had such a large body of work that was born into slavery. So here's a picture of him. It's kind of hard to see, but there he is. Uh, let's see. That's better. There he is, a real photograph of him working on his artwork. And this is one of the pictures that he drew. And if you like, if you're interested in art and you want more information about him, the afterword tells you a lot of his information. Um, now, 30 years after his death, he's actually become, he actually became very famous. Unfortunately, he didn't know about it because his work was discovered by some museums and, and um, people who know a lot about art. And he had a lot of art displays and art shows and after he was already dead. But um, people really like his work. And I'm going to try to include some pictures so you can look at them um, on the assignment. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new and you're interested in learning more about him. All right, friends. Happy reading.